بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على خاتم الأنبياء والمرسلين نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين. This is section 7.8 uh, improper integrals. Well, we defined the definite integral a b uh, f of x integral of f of x from a to b and f of x was a function continuous defined on a closed interval a and b well now we talk about intervals in which there is uh, an infinite oh, of course we assumed that f doesn't have an infinite discontinuity in section 5.2 well here we, we talk about definite integral but when the interval is infinite means there is infinity from a to infinity or from negative infinity to b and also to the case where f has an infinite discontinuity in the closed interval so f is not continuous in the closed uh, interval a b um, in both cases we call the integral improper integral let us start by infinite uh, intervals type 1 and let us take an example first this is the graph of the function y equals 1 over x square part of the graph because there is another part in the second quadrant now we need to talk about the integral from 1 to infinity of the function 1 over x square dx and we need to think how would we deal with this integral this integral means the infinite area below the curve from 1 to infinity well to approach this integral we start by taking t a number greater than 1 and less than infinity and let us find now this area be, be below the curve 1 over x square and from 1 to t so we are considering the definite integral from 1 to t of 1 over x square dx we can evaluate this integral easily uh, this is x to the power negative 2 the integral would be negative 1 over x from 1 to t so we will have negative 1 over t minus negative 1 over 1 or positive 1 so this area is negative 1 over t plus 1 or just 1 minus 1 over t so this is the area of this region uh, closed region finite region finite area 1 minus 1 over t now if we want to talk about the area from 1 to infinity why don't we take t to infinity so this t can move and when t approaches infinity then we will have the area of the infinite area from 1 to infinity of 1 over x square so we can define this integral by writing it as limit when t approaches infinity of the integral from 1 to t 1 over x square dx and we evaluated this integral and we found that it is 1 minus 1 over t now to find the limit if we replace t by infinity we will have 1 minus 1 over infinity is 0 so this integral would be equal to 1 and we have now the infinite area we know that the infinite area is equal to 1 so this is how we deal with improper integrals when we have infinite uh, intervals so this would be the definition to find the integral from a to infinity we replace infinity by t and we find the limit when t approaches infinity 
well also if if it is from negative infinity to b if the integral is from negative infinity to b then we can replace negative infinity by t and find the limit when t approaches negative infinity of this integral so for example if we are considering the same function but from this side this is the function one over x square and if we are taking if we need to find from negative infinity to negative one one over x square dx so we can call this t and we can find the area from t to negative one and write this integral as limit when t approaches negative infinity from t to negative one one over x square dx if we have integral with from negative infinity to infinity then we can simply divide this integral into two integrals from negative infinity to a plus a to infinity we usually choose a to be zero but you can choose it any number any number between negative infinity and infinity let us study this uh, solve this example determine whether this integral convergent or divergent well here this integral is one so we call that this integral is convergent it converges to one if the answer is not a number infinity or negative infinity then it is divergent so how to find integral from one to infinity one over x dx well the definition says we write it from 1 to t and find the limit when t approaches infinity of 1 over x dx but the integral of 1 over x is len absolute value of x from 1 to t and this would be len t t is going to infinity so it's positive ln t minus ln 1 but ln 1 is 0 now what is the limit of ln t when t goes to infinity the limit is infinity you find this from the graph of ln t this is the graph of ln t ln t you notice that for this function the limit of ln t when t goes to infinity when t this is t if t goes to infinity then the function goes to infinity and the limit of ln t when t goes approaches zero plus if t approaches zero from the right then the function is going down to negative infinity so these are very important limits we will need them always in this section uh, regarding the function the important function ln t so the limit is infinity the integral is infinity so the area the area below the curve 1 over x from 1 to infinity is not convergent like 1 over x square it's divergent it's sum up uh, up to infinity so 1 over x square integral from 1 to infinity is convergent this is a finite area because the curve comes closer to the asymptote the horizontal asymptote very quickly approaches the horizontal, the horizontal asymptote quickly so this is a finite area and it's equal to 1 while integral 1 over x from 1 to infinity is will go to infinity it is not one because the curve does not approach the asymptote uh, as close as one over x square or as fast as one over x square okay so now we have we know how to deal with infinite limits when we have negative infinity or infinity we just write it limit when t approaches in this case negative infinity Uh, 
integral from t to 0, x e x dx. And I can find, I can evaluate this integral here, integral from t to 0, x e x dx. Well, I can find this integral using uh, integration by parts. where I can use the quick method, which we mentioned in section 7.1. u as x, derivative of x is 1, derivative is 0, dv as e x, and the integral is always e x. We here keep the sign, we change the sign here. So this integral would be equal to x e x from t to 0 plus minus e x 1 times e x from t to 0. So we will have uh, if we replace x by 0 this would be 0 minus t e to the power t and if I replace x by 0 here I will get minus 1 and then minus minus which means plus e to the power t and now we need to find this limit well uh, you need to know the graph of et the graph of the function e is very important and it will answer some questions here so if this is the graph of the function e x or e t, then you can find from the graph that the limit of e x when x approaches infinity, when you go to the right, the function goes to infinity. While the limit of e x when x approaches negative infinity, the function, the graph approaches zero. So here, when I replace t with negative infinity, limit e to the power t when t goes to infinity is just zero what about this one now negative negative infinity would be infinity and e to the power negative infinity is zero i have infinity times zero well infinity times zero is one of the indeterminate forms and we need to use l'hopital th uh, formula or l'hopital theorem to find the limit of this quantity so to find the limit of negative t e to the power t when t approaches negative infinity to use L'Hopital's theorem we have to write it in the form f of x over g of x remember that L'Hopital's theorem says limit f of x uh, if limit f of x over g of x when x approaches any any number okay infinity or just a number when the limit is zero over zero or infinity over infinity okay then the limit of f of x over g x would be equal to the limit of f prime of x over g prime of x this is the L'Hopital's rule but we can use this rule only if we have the form 0 over 0 or infinity over infinity so infinity times 0 we have to change it to one of these forms and we can do that by writing e to the power t we take it down into the denominator and we write it e to the power negative t and now when i replace t by negative infinity i'll get infinity over e to the power infinity which is infinity limit e x when x approaches infinity is infinity so now i can use L'Hopital's formula and i can find the derivative of the numerator which is negative one over the derivative of the denominator which is negative e to the power negative t 
minus with minus would be plus. And now if I replace t with negative infinity, I'll have e to the power infinity, which is infinity. And one over infinity is zero. So this limit would be equal to zero at the end. And the answer would be negative one. So this integral would be equal to negative one and it is uh, convergent. Another uh, question from negative infinity to infinity, I can immediately write it from negative infinity to zero, for example, plus from zero to infinity. If you notice, this function is even function because f of negative x equals f of x. So the part to the right of zero is equal to the part exactly the same as the part to the left of the y-axis, the y-axis. So in fact, I can find one of these two integrals and the other would be equal the same exactly. So let us find the integral from zero to infinity. We write it limit when t approaches infinity from zero to t. Now this is equal to limit when t approaches infinity. The integral of one plus one over one plus x squared is tan inverse x from zero to t. Tan inverse zero is zero, so this is the limit of tan inverse t when t goes to infinity. And this limit is just pi over two. And you know that from the graph of tan inverse. The graph of tan inverse is very important to know this graph. It has two horizontal asymptotes, y equals pi over 2 and y equals negative pi over 2. And the graph is like this. So tan, inver tan inverse 0 is 0. And when t goes to infinity, if this is t or x, okay, when x goes to infinity, tan inverse x goes to pi over 2. So from this graph, I know that limit tan inverse of x when x approaches infinity is pi over 2, and limit tan inverse x when x approaches negative infinity is negative pi over 2, and we will use these limits uh, many times in this section. You can also find the limit, this limit, the left limit, similarly, and you will find that it's equal to pi over 2. So the integral of from negative infinity to infinity of 1 plus x squared dx would be 2 times pi over 2 or pi over 2 plus pi over 2, and the answer would be pi and it's a convergent integral. So this is the graph of 1 over 1 plus x squared. You can see that it's an even function. And this infinite area is equal to pi. Thanks to calculus, we now are able to even find infinite areas. Example 4, for what values of b is this integral convergent? We have seen that integral 1 over x squared is convergent from 1 to infinity, while from 1 to x, uh, integral 1 over x from 1 to infinity is divergent. Here we would like to find out, in general, what are the values of p for which the integral is convergent. So let us evaluate this integral. Integral from 1 to infinity, 1 over x to the power p dx. By definition, it is the limit when t goes to infinity from 1 to t, 1 over x to the power p dx. Or just let me write it x to the power negative p. p is just a number, so when you take it up, it would be x to the power negative p. And now the integral of 
x to the power negative p is x to the power negative p plus 1 over negative p plus 1. And we should evaluate this integral from 1 to t. All right, so this would be equal to the limit. Uh, I can take, I can take one over negative b plus one outside, okay, the limit, and evaluate this from one to t. So I will have t to the power negative p plus 1 minus 1 to this power is, is 1. Of course, negative p plus 1 is just a constant. That's why I can take it out. And if x is 1, so I have 1 to the power negative p plus 1, which is, which is 1. Notice that for this proof, x is not, we are not assuming that p is 1. p couldn't be 1 in this proof, because otherwise the denominator would be 0. So we are talking about any p except 1. Of course, we know what happens if p is 1. We know that 1 over x dx when p is 1 is divergent. We proved this earlier in this lecture. So let me write this as... 1 over negative p plus 1 uh, limit t goes to infinity of, let me write it as 1 over t to the power p minus 1. Okay, minus 1. So if I take t to the power negative p plus 1 down, I change, I multiply the power by negative, so it would be like this. And now what would be this limit? If t goes to infinity, I will have infinity to the power p minus 1 in the denominator. And now I have to consider uh, what would happen. What is 1 over infinity to the power p minus 1? Well, if p is greater than 1, so I have 1.1, 1 1.2, 2, 3, 4, then infinity to some positive power would be infinity. And 1 over infinity would be 0 in this case. But if p is less than 1, then p minus 1 would be negative. For example, p is 0. So infinity to the power negative 1. And what would happen? It would be infinity. It will go up. So the answer in this case would be infinity. If the answer is 0, then the integral is convergent. If the answer is infinity, then the integral is divergent. So I can say that this integral, this integral, Convergent, uh, convergent is convergent if p is greater than 1 and it would be divergent if p is less than 1. All right, this is what would happen because I'll have 0 if p is greater than 1 and infinity if p is less than 1. So this is a formula now, or a rule, put it in your mind, that integral from 1 to infinity of 1 over x to the power p is convergent if p is greater than 1, like x squared, x cubed, 1 over x squared, as we have seen. And if p is less than 1, it's divergent. 1 over square root of x, for example, is divergent. Okay. Uh, And if p is 1, we know that it's also divergent. The second type in this section, when we have discontinuous integrals. Discontinuous integrals uh, like this. This is a function, y equals f of x. And this function is not continuous at b. The line x equals to b is a horizontal asymptote. So here... Uh, it's an open area, okay, 
the function is not continuous. So how to find the area from A to B, the integral from A to B of this function f of x, okay? If the function is discontinuous at B, the function is not continuous at B, how to define? Well, we take T before B, and we can find this area, the dashed area, okay, from A to T. We can find this easily. And then we take, we take the limit when T approaches B from the left. So that would be the definition. Integral from A to B of the function would be the limit of integral from A to T when T approaches B from the left. Notice that we can approach B always from the left. If you come from the right, then you are not in the interval. Also here, if it is not continuous at A, so we can write limits when T approaches A from the right, and we write T here instead of A. And we can approach T from the right because we are coming from the interval, inside the interval. If the function is uh, not continuous at C between A and B, so we divide the integral from A to C plus C to B. And by this, we can find the integral when there is a discontinuity, when the function has infinite uh, discontinuity. Let us find this integral. Well, notice that uh, from now on, you need to notice that uh, is the function continuous in this interval from 2 to 5? Well, uh, at 2, the function is not defined because 1 over 0 is not defined. So the function is not continuous at 2. The function is not continuous at 2, so we replace 2 by t. And we take t to 2, okay? The interval is 2 to 5. We approach 2 from the right. So limit when t approaches 2 from the right, that's the definition. Okay. And now you can find this integral. Okay. Uh, this integral is, I can write it x minus 2 to the power negative half. And the integral would be x minus 2 to the power half over half or times 2 from t to 5. So it would be uh, 5 minus 2, 3 to the power half square root of 3 minus square root of t minus 2. This would be the integral. So we will have the limit when t approaches 2 from the right of 2 square root of 3 minus square root of t minus 2. If I replace t by 2, 2 minus 2 is 0. So this would be cancelled and the answer would be 2 square root of 3. And this uh, integral is convergent. So this is the graph of the function y equals 1 over square root of x minus 2. At x equals to 2, there is a vertical asymptote. This area is an open area, infinite area. And using calculus, we found that it's equal to 2 square root of 3. Another uh, integral from 0 to 3. Look to the function. You see that the function is not continuous at 1 because 1 makes the denominator 0. So what to do? We divide this integral into two integrals from 0 to 1 plus from 1 to 3. And now we evaluate any one of them. Let us, for example, evaluate the first one. Now the function is not continuous at 1. So we write at limit and we replace 1 by t. 
the, the interval is 0, 1. We approach 1 from the left. So we write T approaches 1 from the left. Now, the integral of 1 over x minus 1 is len absolute value of x minus 1 from 0 to t. And this equals limit ln t minus 1 minus ln 0 minus 1 absolute value is 1, ln 1 is 0. So that's the ln. That's what we have from here. Now, if I replace t by 1, 1 minus 1 would be 0, ln 0. Uh, if, you, if you go to the ln, if you remember the graph of the ln, you will notice that when we approach uh, this from the right of 0, okay? So 1 minus 1 would be absolute value, 0 plus. We are approaching limit ln x. When x approaches 0 from the right, we have seen that it is negative infinity. So the limit here is negative infinity. And this means that this integral, the first integral, is divergent. So the original integral is divergent. And there is no need in this case to evaluate the second integral because the first one is divergent. If one of them is divergent, that said, you stop and say the original integral is divergent. And pay attention, if you do not uh, notice that the function is not continuous at one, not defined at one, and you just found the integral of one over x minus one, ln x minus one, and you evaluated from zero to three, your answer would be ln two. And then you will you will think that this is a correct answer, but in fact it's not, because the function is not continuous at one, and one is a number between zero and three. This is an improper integral, and you have to evaluate it by using limits. So you need to pay attention from now on whether the function is continuous or not. Let us find the limit of uh, the integral of ln x from 0 to 1. Well, ln x uh, is not defined at 0. x equals to 0, in fact, is a vertical asymptote. So we will write it, limit, and we replace 0, which we have problem with, by t. And t will approach 0 from the right. Well, we evaluated before integral of ln x dx using uh, by parts, using integration by parts. If you remember, you can check section 7.1 again. And the answer was uv, which is x ln x, minus integral of v du, which is integral of 1, which is x. So in fact, Integral of ln x is x ln x minus x, and we need to evaluate this from t to 1. Len 1 is 0, so this would be cancelled. And I'll have minus 1, 0 minus 1, then minus, replace x now by t, I have t ln t, minus minus would be plus well, when t is 0, this would be 0, and this would be t0, zero, len 0 plus is negative infinity. 0 times negative infinity, there is a minus here, so you can say 0 times infinity. We have to use L'Hopital's rule. So let us find the limit of negative t, len t, when t approaches 0 from the right. 0 times infinity. So. To use L'Hopital's rule, as we mentioned, we have to write it as a fraction. So I will keep ln t up, and here I will write t to the power negative 1. OK. 
okay now if you replace t by 0 I'll have negative infinity and 1 over 0 is infinity negative infinity so infinity over infinity so I can use L'Hopital's rule and find the derivative of ln t which is 1 over t and the derivative of t to the power negative 1 is negative 1 over t square so now this is 1 over t divided by 1 over t square so it's 1 over t multiplied by t square so it's just t so the limit when t approaches 0 of t would be just 0 so it turns out that this limit is 0 and the final limit would be negative 1 so this integral converges and it's equal to negative 1 the area so this infinite area is 1 and the negative sign because the area is below the x-axis. Thank you very much and study hard.